What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 121 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today we have the UEFA Champions League first knockout round. If you missed last episode please feel free to go watch it. It was a fairly entertaining result and uh, episode. Well actually there were two results one of which was very good. And let's have a quick look at the game since the last episode. We did of course play that last Champions League game off camera and I'm kind of glad we did. We got hammered. 3-0 uh, by AC Milan who themselves secured third spot in the group and will move into the Europa League. Um, and since then it's been pretty f plain sailing as you can see here. I've updated my view so you guys can get an idea of some of the attendances we get for our games. Uh, which I kind of feels like is uh, nice. Of course, if you didn't watch the second half of last episode, you don't know. But I've started playing at a slightly different resolution. So you guys can see a little bit more of what's on kind of camera. Hopefully everything else is a little bit better spaced out. And also, I think the 2D match engine and 3D match engine particularly look a little bit nicer for you guys. Anyway, since of course that last episode, we've had the Christmas or January rather transfer window and there's been a fair bit going on there. Uh, I say that, there hasn't been a ton, but there's been enough for it to be worth talking about. If we look on the outs here, there were a few sales and a few departures, a few loanies, but the big deals really, there were three of them. The first one, Villalba going to AC Milan. £7.5 million paid for the 21-year-old, a player who really has been on the fringe this year in the squad. He only played three league games for us, he made a few appearances as well continentally. But ultimately, with the addition of the new Graphite at left-back and a new player who will come on to very shortly, I felt like it was time to move Villalba on and to get one point, oh, sorry, £7.5 million for him, I was very, very happy about. Anyway, the next player that we have on the outs, if we just have a quick look here, uh, was Takez, Taco, um, a player who we brought in a few years ago and I wanted a lot from this guy. I expected a lot from him. He came in for £3.4 million. From Cruzeiro, uh, he was disappointing for us really and we've sold him on two years later for a £2 million loss. A little bit painful to have that but he was a player who was kicking up a fuss as was Villalba about wanting first team football. I couldn't really give it to him and as a result just decided to move him on while we could for a little bit of money. The last player to go, perhaps a little bit of a surprise this one but one that I did kind of with a heavy heart. I ended up selling Elmo for £3.5 million. Now £3.5 million isn't a lot but we did include a sell on clause in that contract and well I was quite happy to get some of the wages of Elmo off the wage budget. Uh, over the transfer window you can see here uh, if we go to... Uh, where will it be? Where will it be? I'm looking for the, the wage spend. If we go to budget adjustments, you can see here we're spending £482,000 a week on wages. At the start of the year, we were actually spending an extra 50000 on top of that. So we've cut our wages a little bit. Another thing about the Elmo deal was the fact that we actually have a few clauses wrapped up in there. And it's a clause which I have in a lot of my other transfers as well. If we look at Elmo's departure here, you'll see that 50% of his next transfer fee goes to us. So any amount he goes for... 50% of it is coming our way and actually I've talked about a few of the players who have this deal Cabral is another one who has this kind of uh, sell on clause in his contract which I mean is going to benefit us hopefully long term but there are a fair few players who are starting to have this clause. Gennari has one which is to do with profit being sold on if we look at Jun Won Kyung you can see 50% of the profit made on him he was signed by Porto for £5 million 50% of that is going to go to us um, Sergio Marquez 50% of his transfer fee will go to us, of course, Sergio Marcos and Marquez, our former right back, a very good player, uh, valued at £33 million, pounds. so if he goes for a fraction of that price, we really do make a nice return off it, and also perhaps the most notable player of sales in recent years, really, Christian Mendes, the Colombian, has a 50% salon clause, this guy, yeah, I feel sorry for him, we sold him for Arsenal for £35 million, pounds, which was a ludicrous fee at the time, and he just hasn't performed for them. Of course, the AI in Football Manager has a weird tendency, I guess, to just overspend sillily on players and well, to spend £35 million, million pounds on a player who made five starts in the first team in his first year. It's just a little bit underwhelming. It's a shame for the Colombian, because I do rate him. You'll see that he is unhappy at the moment. I assume that's down to lack of first team football. It is indeed. So if he was to force a move in the summer, we could make a healthy little bit of money, assuming he goes for some money, and, well, that would help us out massively. Anyway, those were the big departures. There was one big, big in, and this is the biggest transfer we've ever made by a massive margin, and it's this guy, Cabasele. Now, this is a guy I've been eyeing up for years. I saw him when he was very young, and I wanted to sign him, and they wanted £50 million for him. I think it was Bayer Leverkusen. And... I, I I kind of sat back watching him develop and I, I really wanted to get him. And he ended up being transfer listed, I believe, at the start of the year. And at the time, they were asking for £45 million for him, which, well, I obviously couldn't afford. 
However, uh, in this January transfer window, he came up for a little bit cheaper, and whilst he is cup-tied this year, and £21 million is a record transfer for the club by quite some margin, I'm very excited about what this guy can actually offer to us. He's a fantastic fullback. He's right-footed, and he can actually play left-back, which is a little bit odd. It kind of reminds me of Villalba in some ways. I am currently training him to play right-back, because that is somewhere where I feel like he can play for us, and I think that will be his better-suited role. But the fact he's a very versatile kind of fullback and can play both sides is absolutely incredible. Incredible. He's 21 years old with bags of international experience. As you can see, if we look at his cons, uh, he's only got kind of to do with his quickness not being great, but he's very suited to Premier Division football. Form's been great. He's got great pace and acceleration. I don't really know why they want to improve his quickness further. Might be something we're looking to do, but at 21 years old, this guy... He looks like he could be incredible for us. He's actually got a two-year deal at the moment at the club, but it comes with an optional three-year extension clause. So really, we've got him tied down for the next five years at least. And whilst it is a massive outlay, and it has hit our finances fairly hard, I'm hoping it's going to be worth it in the long run. As you can see, our overall balance drops to £10 million, which is the lowest it's really fallen since, well, as you can see here, March time of uh, 2029, so going back three years now. But regardless, I'm hoping he's going to be a good signing for us. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, he is cup-tied, which means he won't be making an appearance in today's Champions League game. Anyway, looking at the squad here, it's... um. A bit streamlined. It's a lot smaller than perhaps it's been in the past. You know, there's still room, I think, to bring in a few more players. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the team. You can see Cabaselli obviously ineligible for the Champions League game because he is, um, well, cup-tied. Paul Smith also out of an injury. But besides that, we're pretty much at full strength. And if we look at our team here with our beautiful new tactic screen, which, of course, we introduced last episode, you can see here... This is the team at our disposal. We start in goal with Young, the Swedish maestro. What a beast he has been, the 27-year-old. Still looking like an absolutely fantastic player for us. At left back, we go with Graphite. Uh, again, he's had a great first year at the club. He may find his position a little bit under threat, I guess, with um, Cabaselle coming into the squad. But at the same time, I feel like having three very kind of cohesive and, what's the word, very, very good fullbacks. Um, is going to work wonders for us, and I think we'll be able to get some nice rotation going. But Graphite here, he's had a great start to his time at the club. At centre-back, we go with the usual kind of suspects, I guess, in Ramadan Mustafa and Frugier. You'll notice that Ramadan Mustafa, oh, he, well, he was unhappy. He's not unhappy anymore. He was a little bit kind of apprehensive about how we were doing and the fact I wasn't willing to sell him, but he seems to have knuckled down now and really uh, kind of upped his morale. Anyway, the next player we have is Frugier, who I believe should now be eligible for Gibraltar. Um... Yeah, he is. He is eligible for Gibraltar, which is kind of cool. I'm hoping he might decide to play for Gibraltar. That would be a really nice addition to the squad to getting a good centre-back, so keep an eye out on him. At right back, we, of course, have Graf Wright, the 25-year-old, a very versatile player. With Cabaselli coming into the squad, you know, he might long-term slot in at the right-back position, but Graf Wright's kind of real flexibleness and his just ability to play everywhere means that he will not be kind of forced out the squad, although you will see his transfer status here is not, listed, uh, not needed. I did offer him out to clubs, just to see if I could get any bids for him. And I did that with actually a few of our players who had teams interested in them. Perhaps players that I don't necessarily see as key players for the future that, I mean, they might be nice to keep, but if I was to receive in excess of, say, £10 million, I'd be quite happy to let them go. He was kind of one of the players that perhaps fell into that kind of uh, area. Anyway, at centre mid for today's games, we're going to go with JJ. He's been so good for us. And alongside him, Bouchard, of course, Bouchard and Paul Smith. In their 10th years at the club, I cannot believe that they have been that loyal or a servant for us. You can see they've appeared every single season. They've done a great job for us. And I'm really hoping that long term, um, they can just be legends of the club that kind of, you know, go on to be staff members, go on to be kind of assistant manager to us potentially. And, uh, well, yeah, Bouchard, just what a beast he has been for us. And it's great to see him playing today. Of course, we'll be taking the captain's armband due to Smith's injury. Anyway, at right mid today, we're going to go with Daniel Forster, the German player who, at the start of the season, really, I didn't know how much he was going to feature in the side. Pereira last year had been the kind of player of the year. This year, this guy has stepped up an absolute, uh, well, I was about to say shit ton. That part of my French. He's, he's done well. He's got 15 goals and 20 assists in 17 games. He's kind of just come out of his shell. He's really played well. Kind of filled the void, I guess, that Pereira has left. Pereira was out for a little while with an injury. Uh, and you can see here he's still struggling with his match fitness. He has declined as a player as a result of that broken collarbone that you can see he suffered. But if we look at his career stats, uh, this season, I mean, he's scoring goals for fun and he's got a decent amount of assists. But just with that injury today, I think Forster's going to be the player to take the right-hand side of the pitch. Anyway, at central attacking mid, we're going to go with Ernesto Vergara. The uh, Argentine, obviously, at the time was a record transfer for us. I think he's been a very good player for us he only has three years left on his contract and i say only that's still a very long time a player whose contract i would like to extend ideally but you can see here he wants perhaps you know a, a sizable pay rise and well 
I don't know if I can justify at the moment. He's on 55 grand a week or, or a month, which is a lot of money. And, um, well, I'd like to change that if I can. Anyway, out on the left, we have Cesar Fialos, the Ecuadorian, coming in for Paul Smith. You know, not technically as gifted as Paul Smith, and perhaps not as good mentally, but he's a very fast player, and definitely on his day, he can cause some trouble for the opposition. And then up top for today's game, we are going to go with Mosca, the attacking midfielder, just been an absolute superb player for us, continuing to develop this year as well, which was really nice. And um, I was glad to keep him at the club. And in January, in fact, we had a bid of £10 million, which the board initially accepted without consulting me. And I kind of stomped my feet and requested, you know, please let us keep him because he's going to be a key player for us. And, well, I'm pleased to say the board agreed. They listened to me. They respected my opinion as a long-term manager here at the club. And as a result, we were able to keep hold of him. We did receive a few bids later on, around £12 million. But to be honest, this player is worth so much more to us right now. And I think long-term, he could easily become kind of you know, one of the big players for us, you can see the fans absolutely love him. He's not been at the club that long, really, but his goal-scoring form has just been absolutely superb for us. Anyway, that is the team. We are going to be playing the 4-2-3-1, as you guys noticed. On the bench for today's game, we have some pretty good options. Uh, you look at our team here, we've got Salcedo, the Mexican goalkeeper, of course, joined us for £5 million at the start of the year. Developing well, the young goalkeeper. I'm hoping he's going to be a long-term replacement for Young, of course. And, uh, well, you can see already he is a very competent goalkeeper for our kind of team, which is nice to see. Anyway, we have Lamas next, of course, the former Barcelona man. Uh, a player who we brought in to play either side of fullback, a little bit like Cabacele. I feel like both these guys are going to be very useful for us, but perhaps Lamas more so, just because he can play centre mid as well. He's not an outstanding player. He isn't going to be first choice fullback every game. But at the same time, he's a fantastic player to have and can really fill in a variety of positions should, you know, a mild injury crisis kind of occur. Anyway, the next player we have is Gilvan, the creative Brazilian, 21 years old, on the bench for today's game. And let's go with the old guard of kind of Bouchard and JJ in the centre of midfield for us. The next player we have in our squad is Helic, a player who I did offer out the kind of January transfer window just to see if we could get any interest. The 30-year-old, you know, if we could cash in for him, it would be nice. He only has a year and a half left on his current deal, but he's been a good player for us when we've called upon him. You can see in the Premier Division, he's got eight goals. In uh, Europe this year, he's got two goals and three assists in six appearances, two of which were on off the bench. So he's done a good job for us. The next player we have is Walter Palermo, uh, the Argentine left-back come centre-back. Not great in the air, really, but he's done a good job for us when we have called upon him, and he is perhaps the, the go-to third-choice centre-back if we do have injuries at the moment, so good to have him fit. We then have Pereira, who, as I mentioned, is fighting back from an injury. When we've called upon him, he's been very good for us this year, and hopefully, you know, if we want to make an impact sub, if we want to bring on a fresh pair of legs out wide, he can uh, have a desired impact, I guess, for us. And last but not least, in today's match, God, we're going to go with Carlos Andres Mora, the Colombian centre mid come striker, can fill in for a variety of positions down the spine of the squad. And uh, all in all, just a great player for us. And I don't know, I feel like this guy has uh, been a bit of an unsung hero. You know, he doesn't bang in the goals, and he hasn't played striker for us that much, truth be told. But um, when we've called upon him, he's done well. You can see this year he's played 15 games at centre mid, four at centre attacking mid. He's always performed fairly well in those positions, and, well, I'm hoping he can put in a good performance for us today. Players missing out of the squad, Castano, the Colombian centre-back. We also have Jose, who came in as kind of a, a backup striker at the start of the year. He's kind of filled in where need be. He has asked to leave the club. I've offered him out, but truth be told, he's probably going to be a, a, a player who we, at the moment at least, and the more I think about it, just want to keep as a backup player. You can say I offered him out for £10 million, but no teams were willing to pay that kind of money for him. And, well, ultimately, I feel like he's more valuable to just keep in the squad. Anyway, Cabaselli and Paul Smith are injured, of course. Smith going to be a massive miss for us. Out for two weeks, I do believe he will be back for the next game, uh, which will be Leon at home at the Space Park. As you can see, we are away today. Going to be a tricky game, but we've got a good little gap of just under a month until that second leg. So as long as we can give ourselves a good kind of shout here, I'll be very happy. We had a very, very kind of pleasing group stage. I'm hoping we can build off that again today. we will be interesting to see how things kind of turn out for us. I expect us to win today. I expect us to try and reach the quarterfinals, as of course we did last year. And uh, well, given how we performed in the group stage, I think there's a fairly good chance that we can do that on our day. We're going to be sticking with the 4-2-3-1, which of course in the group stage did serve us very well. I'm hoping for big performances from the wide men and, well, Mosca down the centre of the spine of the team and kind of the, the spearhead of our attack. And, well, away from home, we're going to be looking for those goals to see what we can do here. And, well, we might have a chance here for Gara to graphite. Whips it in Mosca. Can't quite get to the ball. Galvan, the uh, the goalkeeper, ends up collecting it. And, well, now uh, Leon going to build from the back. Is it Lyon or Leon? I know it's not one, and everyone laughs when I say it the wrong way, and I can't remember which it is. I want to say it's Lyon. Is it Lyon or is it Leon? I'm going to go with Lyon. If that's wrong, then um, I guess you could say I was 
lying, lying. That was meant to say lying. It didn't work, did it? Either way, I'm, I'm sorry to all my French troops. I tell you what, between the games, I'm going to go and check it. Either way, they've hit the crossbar. I'm panicking. Graphite now to bring away the ball. Now Forster. Can we break quickly here? This is one place where we really can shine as a squad. Forster, options in the middle. Dispossessed a great tackle there by Zielinski. And, uh, well, they come away with the ball. And uh, we don't make anything of the resulting uh, set piece. But so far on this game, so good. It's been a, a tight game. Both teams having a fair amount of chances. But uh, at the moment, the deadlock remains unbroken. Although, well, they're coming forward here. Young collects the ball very competently there in goal. Quick off his line. Now looking for some good distribution from him. Worth noting, they are playing a 4-4-2 against us. So I feel like we can maybe fill the gaps between their midfield and defensive lines. And, you know, look to find some space there to really break them down. At the moment, perhaps that hasn't shone so much. But as the game goes on, I'd favour us to maybe find a little bit more space there. Looking at the stats, really, two half chances for either team, and that's been your lot. It's going to be nil-nil at half-time, and, well, this result really isn't kind of favouring us right now. I'm going to try and get the players fired up for the second half. It's been a disappointing display, truth be told. Fire loss out on the left-hand side has not done great for us. Uh, unfortunately, we've not really got that left midfield option. That is one area of the squad where perhaps we're lacking just one more backup player. I kind of would like a player who can play both left mid and right mid in the attacking midfielder areas. That would be something that perhaps would be worth investing in over the summer. Uh, just a little bit of backup, you know, for in this kind of situation where perhaps we want to bring on a fresh winger and make a difference. Anyway, let's see what Forster can do here. Vergara, can he pull it in? He can, and Mosca is there. Let's go. That is a crucial away goal for us. Mosca's 43rd goal of the year. He's got a long way to go if he wants to equal Tuzon's record of what I believe was something in the region as 75 goals, which is a ludicrous sum. But, um, well, a goal there is an important one. And, well, it doesn't matter how many scores in a season, as long as he scores in these kind of games. That is really what you want from your big strikers when you're a club like us. And, well, he's buried that nicely. The guard of the centre attack in mid, you know, drifting out wide, finding some space. And, uh, well, he only had one man to pick out in the centre. And, well, pick him out, he did. And, uh, well, you'd have to say... We're, we're letting them get into this game a little bit. I'm going to change the system, though. I'm going to make what might seem a bit of a controversial change. I'm actually going to change to the 4 3 one, two, narrow. And um, I feel like this could actually serve us quite nicely. So we're going to move Vergara to centre attacking mid. I'm going to take off force to the right winger for Gilvan. Uh, and then I'm also going to take off fire loss for Mora, who is going to slot in at left centre at mid with JJ just playing as that centre defensive mid for us. So this is kind of a, a normal-ish change for us. There's nothing too crazy going on here, but I think this could serve us quite nicely. So um, those are the changes we're going to make, just the double change. Vergara and Mosca are going to be leading the attack with Gilvan in behind, a bit of South American flair in the final third. And in midfield, uh, Mora going to join the likes of JJ and Buchard. I want to overload that centre of the midfield perhaps a little bit more and hopefully give us a little bit more defensive rigidity. Although that said... Well, they're on the attack here. Young holds on to it. A nice save there. A good effort, really, but only a half chance. And, well, the keeper was more than up to the test. It was hit at him, truth be told. Not likely to beat him at the near post. And, well, with 19 minutes left in this game, I mean, we have been... I don't want to say we've been outplayed, but we'd be fortunate if we were to come away here with a win. But, at the same time, we've defended fairly well. You know, we've not had a clear-cut chance against us just yet. And whilst we've not had a ton of the ball... We've had that one chance we made it count, and well, set piece here, Young tips it wide, and it was a nice, nice save, although I don't feel like the attack is over Lombard, the right midfielder, to whip it in. Ball scrambled around in the box, blocked away somehow, that was a clear-cut chance. Can we now counter, maybe? Mora, acres of space ahead of him, lots of men on the attack, unfortunately, just unable to pick out that killer pass that could have really seen us get away and potentially create some kind of attack. Either way, though, 12 minutes left. Still chances flying either way. I feel like this 4-3-1-2 formation change hasn't perhaps served us as I was hoping, but we're going to have to stick with it now. We have taken off the wide man, and JJ going to steal the ball there. Mosca kicks it into the back of his teammate. Frugier, though, with the header. Now JJ, Gilvan, up to Vergara. Dispossessed, but Gilvan, the sub, still gets the ball somehow. Now Graphite. Can he play it inside? He can. Mora there. Can he score? He can score. I talked about the fact that despite being a striker, he doesn't seem to get many goals for us, but the sub has got a goal right there. And it's a nice finish by him. We had a few men over here. Graphite, nice ball through, pokes it through, and then it's just Mora. Who, um, well, he, he stands up and kicks it through the defender's legs. Megs is him there. And, um... It's 2-0. Two it's 2-0. Two, two away goals as well. If we could keep the clean sheet now, this would be an absolutely fantastic way to start this first leg. And, well, one more goal. We are dreaming. Mosca, options in the middle. Whips it in. Vergara's there. Let's go, boys. 3-0. I don't want to say that's game over, but that is a very good first leg performance. If we get one goal, of course, suddenly they need five. And, 
I'd be backing us then. I would be backing us then. Mosca whips the ball in. Bagara playing complete forward now. Was provider earlier on in the game for Mosca to score. Uh, the ro re uh, roles have been reversed there. And, uh, well, late on in this game, they have caved. We have started to perform out of our skin. And, well, c could we score again? Not long left. Vergara to make it four. I can't see it happening. Graphite, though, whips in. I mean, the cross almost went in. You've seen them flying in FM if you've played FM. And, well, it finishes here 3-0. You know, we've not had a ton of chances. And in the end, uh, perhaps with them going more and more on the attack, it kind of benefited us. And uh, we were able to come away, ultimately, with a very, very convincing performance. Winning 3-0. Moscow, you can see, top goal scorer in the competition getting himself a goal, Mora and Vergara also contributing. And, well, truth be told, we couldn't ask for a better start uh, to this, the first knockout round. And we look already like we already have one foot in the quarterfinal, which is very pleasing to say. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this episode, guys. Of course, there's still another half it left to go. It's not all done yet, Jack. Don't get too carried away. We've got a second leg to look forward to. It's in a little while for me. It'll be coming straight this way for you. Stick around. Let's see if we can get it done. Okay, guys, so we are back for the second leg, and it is Leon we are playing, not Lyon. I went and checked on Google. Consulted Google. I apologise to all my French viewers. Je suis très désolé. I don't even think that's correct French. Either way, I'm probably digging myself a hole deeper here. We go into this game certainly not in a hole. If anything, Leon have the, the hole to dig themselves out of. We have a free goal, away goal lead, and, a, well, one home goal for us here will result in them needing five goals. It's worth noting, we apparently have a terrible pitch. I guess that's our overall playing surface quality. I almost feel like that perhaps plays into our hands a little bit and will do against potentially bigger teams in Europe who decide they want to play kind of sexier football. Anyway, going into today's game, this was the team I was going to go with until, uh, well, Paul Smith got injured. He actually is out of a back strain. Uh, and he got that only a few days ago in training, just recovering from his previous injury. So again, we're going to be without him for today's game. So um, that does mean a little bit of a shuffle around uh, kind of on the bench. But you can see our team, with the exception of, well, I was going to say with the exception of Smith, but of course with Firelos going back into the team, uh, with no exceptions, this is the team that we played in the last game. I'm hoping for the same performance again, really. Mosca really instrumental in that success, of course, getting that opening goal. And I'm hoping the Champions League top goal scorer is going to be able to do more of that for us today. Let's see how we get on in today's game. Taking in on Leon at home, of course. If we get the first goal here, if we get a goal at all here, we're in pole position. We are in pole position. Leon would suddenly need five goals. And, well, you'd have to say you'd, that doesn't seem likely to happen. I mean, it's football manager. Weird stuff happens. But that would be pretty crazy, even by FM standards. But regardless, you know, we don't want to let things slip. We don't want to elapse in concentration here. We go into the second leg. I want the same focused display that we showed in the first leg. And while we're on the break here, it's a 2v1. Mosca bearing down on goal. Vergara's there, laid across. Fialos. He scores the Ecuadorian, the dream start. The man who wasn't going to start the game until Paul Smith got injured. Didn't have a game to remember in the first leg, but against Leon here. I mean, looking at the stats, we've been all over them really early on. And while well, Mosca did very well to get that pass away, you thought with the initial block perhaps the chance was gone. But Fialos, or Fialos there, the Ecuadorian, slots it home. The keeper caught a little bit out of position. The fans are enjoying it. And, um... The perfect start, really. The perfect start. Could not ask for anything more from this team. This has been, well, what we needed. Leon suddenly need five. If we get one more, they need six. And then I will be on the beach. I will be having a party. Until then, though, we do need to stay switched on. You know, there is a long time left in this game. 17 minutes. You'd have to say to concede, well, five goals. Uh, everything would have to go wrong. The sky would literally have to fall. But, I mean... I won't trust it until we're another goal ahead. And Mosca takes the ball down delightfully. Can he finish? He can't. Would have been some solo effort there. The striker did so well to take down the initial goal kick that just went flying over the two centre-backs' heads. And unfortunately for us, just couldn't get on the end of it. Mustafa there with a fantastic tackle. Now Bouchard with the interception. Now Forster trying to get it up to Vergara. And well, Leon, they're on the attack here. Lombard... Can he get the ball across? He can't. Young does very well in goal there. Saves that from a narrow angle. And while well, Leon, two clear-cut chances their way. But on the scoreline and on the uh, kind of scoreboard in the stadium, it's 1-0. And we are going through fairly comfortably right now. We've had a lot of shots in this game. Not created a ton of great chances. But 1-0 uh, up. 4-0 on aggregate. We are we're cruising here. We don't really need to worry too much, I don't feel like. I, I feel like this is the first time ever, really, in a Champions League knockout stage game. In the second leg, I've actually felt, you know, fairly relaxed. It's not felt like the game could suddenly change all of a sudden out of nothing. And it's a nice feeling, an unfamiliar feeling, certainly. 
Um, I did have a perhaps a worry going into this episode that if we were to lose this game... Oh my gosh, what is happening at the back there? We almost scored again. I did have a worry that if we were to lose this game, it would mean that the actual season, including the end of season episode, would only be five games long. However, we are going to do very well. We might even have a chance for the set piece. Cleared as far as Vergara, but um, they were doing really well here. Forster whips in Galvan, deals with it. But... I mean, it's been it's been impressive so far from us. We have been very good in this game. And, uh, well, we are going to match our PB, our personal best, by reaching the Champions League quarterfinals, which is a, an amazing feat. Of course, last year we did lose in the quarterfinals to Barcelona. I feel confident in saying this now, despite the fact that they are on the attack and Young makes a fantastic save there. Um, but no, I do feel confident now to say that. There's 25 minutes left in this game. I can't see us collapsing and conceding five. It would be... Perhaps the worst collapse of all time. In fact, I'm going to make some changes. JJ on a booking. Let's just make sure he doesn't get sent off. I'm also going to take off uh, Bouchard and give uh, Gilvan and, well, you can see here, Carlos Andres Mora some football. I think the last change we'll make, we'll actually bring on uh, Forster. We'll take off uh, Pereira, the right midfielder, who, you know, he's coming back from a semi-long-term injury. had that collarbone break that um, kind of kept him out throughout January. Needs to get some match fitness. We'll give him some time here. Duffall... It's going to score for Leon. Makes it 1-1 on the night. You'd have to say this performance has been... I don't want to say it's been a lazy performance by us, but as the game's gone on, there's there's definitely been a degree of complacency. You'd have to say Young in goal has done fantastically well for us. Leon's finishing very subpar. You know, to have four clear-cut chances to only score one. Um, of course, you look at the stats as a whole, you know, we have kind of had equal possession. We've had a few half chances ourselves. But the truth be told... Uh, this is a game that, you know, if you have one of those weird games where they always seem to score, we, we could have easily slipped up in and, well, I don't want to say we could have lost, but it definitely couldn't have, it could have been a lot less comfortable. Anyway, Vergara gets the Man of the Match award with that early assist, that very kind of early goal. I think it was in the seventh minute, the difference for us. It was in the eighth minute. Makes it 4-1 and, well, we go marching on into the next round. And, well, we now have the draw to look forward to. And actually, I was checking here, the Champions League draw is taking place on Friday. So we are just going to get straight into that. We are going to go forward. Helic wants to talk about leaving for first team football. Uh, uh, I, I almost want to promise him more football. But um, I might offer him out. I might say I might offer him out. I'm hoping here that he's actually going to say he wants to stay. We'll see. Okay, he says he doesn't want to leave. That's good, you know. Basically giving him the ultimatum of, if you're not happy, we can sell you. But, um, I mean, he doesn't want to go, does he? He's enjoying his time at the club. We are winning. Mosca, apparently interest being shown in him by a Brazilian club, Cruzeiro, who already took Taco off us. Don't really want to let him go if we can avoid it, to be honest, Mosca. He's just such an instrumental part of our plans and really has helped us this year. Either way, let's watch the draw here. The teams in the draw, Porto, Manchester City, PSV... Benfica, Valencia, Real Madrid. I don't know which of these I'd rather have. If we look at the Premier Division, you can see Porto have won it. Of course, we did play Porto in the group stage and we beat them. So they've done well really to get as far as this, finishing second in the group. I think in an ideal situation, we'd probably won... I want to say PSV. Maybe, maybe Valencia. I mean, you can see they've consistently finished second and third. To be honest... It's the group stage. It's not the group stage. It's the Champions League. We're going to have to play all the big teams at some point. Let's put on the automatic draw. Let's see who we get here. It's quarterfinal time. I'm hoping... Well, we come out first. Who are we going to get? Give us Real Madrid. It's Manchester City. Ugh, I didn't really want them. I really didn't really want them. If we look at Manchester City on this save, they've been quite the force, really. Uh, they've won the league, you know, last two years in a row in the Premier League. I don't know where they are now. You can see they actually went on a really long dry spell without it. And actually this year, they do currently sit behind uh, Arsenal. So they might miss out again this year. But they have some very good players. We've, we've encountered them before. You know, it's nothing too new to us, I guess. Taking on Manchester City. But, well, it definitely could have been uh, an easier draw for us. If we look at the past meetings, I believe we've met four times in the past. We have. We've lost every single one. So, I mean, it's going to be a challenge. We'll see what we can do. We haven't played them in a few years, though, so it'll be an interesting way to see how much we have improved. Although, you can see here, they did beat us fairly com comprehensively back in the 2029-30 Champions League 
uh, beating us 5 0 on aggregate across the two legs. But regardless, we're a much improved side. I'm hoping we can go toe to toe with them. Of course, hopefully, I'll see you guys for that episode. The matches will be coming up in a little while. We have actually got a double header of Gibraltar Lions in the Premier Division and Rock Cup quarter final. Probably won't live come then. But yeah, hopefully, I'll see you guys for that Manchester City game. It will be coming at your way next episode. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button. Let me know what you made of the results against Leon down in the comments. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.